everybody my name is crafty Kathy and I want to welcome you to my channel whether this is the very first time that you've ever came here or it's your millionth time I am tickle pink to have you I want to thank you so much all of y'all have been so sweet um, with my sister passing away it's been about a week and a half now we just had her funeral on this past Saturday and the day after her funeral I got the information that I have been waiting for. I've been looking for a new booth for a while, as uh, most of you guys know, and it came actually the day after she passed. And so I have been extremely busy keeping my mind busy, which is a good thing for me. And I've been getting things together for my booth and taking my time to grieve. So, that's all I want to say about that. I don't want to get sad and depressed and start talking about it. But, I am excited about my booth. And, I'm going to show you guys the progress. Now, when I started off, my booth that was nothing but... Well, it wasn't even really walls. I guess it kind of was. It's just kind of the bones of it. You know what I mean? I don't even know what the words are I'm looking for. But, we'll see all about all that in just one second. Are you guys ready to see my new booth? And I do have a few DIYs, by the way, that I'll be adding into this video. Are y'all ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Eee! This is when we first got it, and this is what I'm talking about it being the bones. It's just the structure. It's a 10 by 10 booth, which it's really smart to start off with a smaller booth. That way, you can see what kind of business is going to come through there before you commit and go and buy a large size booth. Here's my husband and Sabby working on making the roof for my booth. I'm doing a farmhouse type motif because the name of my booth is going to be the same as the other, Kits Vintage Farmhouse. And the reason why I do Kits is because my real mother, I was adopted, but my real mother, that was my nickname is Kit. So in case anybody wonders, I always have to go into that story, but it's a long one and I'll tell you about that later, okay? So here's the roof. My husband got the idea just to put an old rusty crusty tin roof on the top. A lot of the vendors in this location have these, their shelf ladder shelves, I guess you could call them. And my husband got the idea just to create one himself. He made it from old barn wood and then we ended up not even using it because it was too big. Here's my husband putting up the walls. We did shiplap on the top and a beadboard on the bottom. And if you'll look in the booth beside me, you will see a teenager passed out. <laughs> That's my daughter. It wore her out just thinking about it. I didn't want all of the walls to be shiplap and just kind of be like everybody else's. I wanted a little something that would stand out. I wanted that farmhouse flair. This is us putting everything together, and it took about two days to get the construction up. In an antique mall, your basic booth is about a 10 by 10 foot long, and they run about $250 or $260 a month, and you usually sign a contract that you will stay with them for at least six months. And also, every time that you sell something, you pay 8 or 10% to the shop itself and all of those prices pay for the people that work there because once you get set up you only come in once or twice a week just to straighten everything up and add stock i want to wait to the end of the video to give you a tour of my booth but i'm just going to show you a quick picture of what it looked like when we first got it put up and then do a couple of diys along the way you want your booth to look professional, and I think it's smart to get some business cards so that your customers can know who you are and what you sell, and I also put flyers up in my booth. At my mall, a lot of products get sold that are in the $10 to $20 price range, and I needed to make a couple to go in my booth. The first one is a cord hider, I think is how you call it, or a little charging station. You set your cell phone up on top here, and it slides into that hole in the back where you can 
pull it out and plug it up. And that way your cords are hidden and it's just a nice, neat little charging station. There's a little drawer in the front that you can pull out and put whatever you need. Now I took and painted it apothecary and I'm gonna use this vinyl that I actually picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I wanted to put this on the top all I did was measure out the size that I needed, and I used my fingernail to kind of push down and make a mark of where to cut the vinyl. Lately, they have really pretty vinyl at the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure what's going on, but every time I go there, I find beautiful vinyl. And this one is actually for a Cricut Joy, but I'm just going to use it for, you know, my own purposes. When you use it this way, instead of like in your Cricut, all you have to do is use it basically like a sticker. You peel the back of it off and place it wherever you want it. And if you have a little overhang that you don't want, like a little extra piece of that vinyl, you can just use your little sanding sponge and sand it right off of there. It comes off no problem. Now, mine had little magnetic thingies on the back of it, so it closed up, and I didn't have to do too much of the sanding on this. I put the vinyl on the very top and then a piece on that front drawer. And isn't this color and just so pretty, the apothecary is so pretty with this floral design. Then I just simply cleaned everything up with my sanding sponge. And I also ran around the edges of this just so it would look a little distressed and, and a little older and wouldn't look so new and fresh. Now that vinyl came off very easy with that sanding sponge. I took some of my Debbie's DIY white wax and I covered the whole surface with this. I let it set for just a moment and then I wiped it off with my clean lint-free rag. And I just love the way that the Debbie's DIY white wax looks with this apothecary. And by the way, if you guys need any DIY products, you need to go to my friend Lori. She is at Milton's Daughter, and I always leave her description in the link below. Now, my subscribers get 10% off all IOD products. The only thing is the DIY paint has a stipulation that they do not do sales on that. So the paints and stuff are not included, but all of your IOD needs, your transfers, molds, stamps, inlays, whatever you need is 10% off to my subscribers. It's www.miltonsdaughter.com and that's my buddy Lori. I also spray painted the front little drawer pull a caramel color. I'm gonna sell this for about 12 to 14 bucks in my booth. It's very important to not only have big ticket items, you want ones that are kind of medium priced and small priced too, because not everybody's looking to spend a lot of money, but they may own something small. Now the next item was this arm wire that has actually been sitting in my sunroom for a long time. But first, if you're enjoying this content and you like to get inside tips on the booth life and what it's like to be a small business owner and how to make your own DIY decor always on a budget, you're in the right spot and I would like to ask you to hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. I would love to have you a part of my family. We always have room and we always have love, laughs, and DIYs around here. Also, there's a little bell beside it, and if you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know every time I put out a video. And guys, if you would, hit that like button because it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And it helps them to know that you like my content, and they will put my videos out there more. So let's get into this arm wire. I painted this a few years ago, and it was just a really quick job that I did, and I didn't get the inside painted. And we had a big heavy piece that sits on the top, and so I did not paint underneath where that piece sat. So I just used the color called Vintage Linen, and it's by DIY Paint and I just covered only the very top of this. Now, the first coat that I do is always just to get it on there, get that coat on there, and when it dries, I added another coat. And then, on the inside here, where you still see the regular wood color, I shellacked it real good so that none of those brown tannins would come through and turn it yellow. 
Then I spray painted the inside with that Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White, my favorite paint. Now you know that there's like a hundred different shades of white. Now this one is called Vintage Linen by DIY and it seemed to match up perfectly with the white that I already had on the rest of the armoire. On the top, there was a little bit of thick paint in some areas because this was actually the, one of the first DIYs that I ever, ever, ever did. And I wasn't that great at painting yet. So what we did is went through with an 80 grit and scuffed it up real good. Then we finished it off with a 220 and a 320 grit. I just put a coat of the Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax. It's a clear wax. I put it all over the top and the bottom of this armoire and then wiped it off with a lint-free rag. Here's a quick picture of what the bottom of the armoire looked like and we did the same thing with the 80 grit and then moved all the way up to the 320 so that they would go together. It took us both all day to do this piece, but I'm glad that we took the time and did it. Now, these pictures don't even show how pretty this thing turned out. A lady offered me $500 for this piece before I even had it like displayed or anything in my booth. And it just goes to show what a little hard work would do. I thrifted this for only $100 a couple of years ago. The next DIY on the agenda was this shelf sitter. It's actually a shadow box. It's a nine by nine. And I got three or four of these at a yard sale for $6 for all three or four. And you guys, if you've ever priced these at Hobby Lobby, this nine by nine size is about $20 on its own. And that's when it's the 50% off. I'm going to use this silk screen stencil by Magnolia Design Company, and that's also another vendor in my mall sells this. I laid it out on the backdrop and made sure that it was all squared up and even. And I've got three colors that I wanted to play around with in the paste. I have a black and then a very light purple and then kind of a magenta type purple, which I am just ended up using too. I used that magenta purple and then the black color. So if you've ever used these stencils before, a lot of people use the Chalk Couture. I like these because they were a little bit cheaper and the quality was just as good as Chalk Couture, if not better. I used my black on the top half and all you do is you use the little tool that they give you and you basically just scrape that paint across or you kind of rub the paint across the stencil and it creates a perfect, every time perfect stencil for you. I have this that came from Dixie Bell, and it is their transfers called Bells and Whistles. This one's called Buds and Branches, and it's got all these beautiful purple color, and we're just going to put a couple of these on the side. I'm going to do this transfer identical the way that I do the ones that I usually work with, which is the IOD. You lay it down, and they give you a little tool. You're going to use that tool to rub it, and then just basically pull it up, and that's going to give you your stencil or your transfer. Then I just burnished it, which means you use that top film and just kind of rub around on it to make sure that it's all pushed down and there's no harsh edges. And then I just put this back in the shadow box and I'm going to sell this one for about $14 to $16. I haven't made up my mind yet, but I hope you like this one. This next one is a simple little tray that I got from the Dollar General on clearance. It was half off and I only spent like $2.50 on this thing. So always keep your eye out. You can buy retail stuff and still sell it in a booth, but you just have to get it at a good price. I'm going to use this vinyl that came in a pack. It's a Cricut vinyl and it had like four or five different floral type vinyls in it. And all I'm doing is measuring it out to see what size I need. I'm going to cover up this tray, the, the wording that's on it. It's pretty, but I'm going to make it prettier with this vinyl. And basically, all you do is just like I did before, we're going to do it like a sticker. 
and you just pull that backing off and lay it down exactly where you need it. After I put mine down, I realized that you could see through that vinyl, so I pulled it back up and I painted underneath that vinyl just a, the vintage linen color, and that way nothing's gonna be showing through, and then I just placed that vinyl back down. I took the little handles off and I just used this wood tint that I have, this antiquing wax, and went all the way around this and I put it on with my brush and then wiped it off with my lint-free rag. And this is a dark walnut color and I wanted it to be dark so I didn't go heavy when I wiped it off. Then I spray painted the handles with the color called Coastal Sage by Rust-Oleum, and I think it turned out just beautiful. I will probably sell this tray for about $12. And the prices that you get in your booth just all depends on your area and what sells. The next thing that we're gonna work on is this old vintage rolling pin. I actually like the red on the handles and the way it looks, so I'm going to bring that out but first i'm going to use that walnut antiquing wax and i covered the whole rolling pin with it very thick and then i just lightly wiped it off i got this iod transfer book it's called redoubt 2 and i got it from my friend Lori at milton's daughter it's always easy to add transfers to things and make it beautiful and it sells really good so I picked this beautiful red rose and I just did that the same way that I did the others where you lay your transfer down and you use your tool to rub it and then you're gonna burnish it. I also added some of the beautiful French words that comes on that transfer and this turned out gorgeous and guys people will buy this before i even set it out i just about bet you because rolling pins sell really good in my area and you can sell them for a great price and here's another quick tip if you're selling in a mall go around and look at the other vendors and their booths and see what they sell and what price point they're selling it for that way you will have a perfect idea of what you can sell your pieces for because different areas, things go for different prices. I scuffed it up a little bit with a sanding sponge so it wouldn't look new and look a little old and vintagey. And then I just took my red color that's called Crimson by Waverly and I did the handles so that they would be fresh and red. I paid $2.50 for this rolling pin. In my area, I will sell it for $18. And now it's time to tour my new booth, Kitts Vintage Farmhouse in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I made this sign for my booth four foot long. It's very simple and very farmhouse. And I love these three electrical reels that I placed in the front for a makeshift table. You want your front display to be something that reflects what your booth is all about. And since mine is farmhouse, I put some of my prettiest farmhouse things right up front to catch their eye. You want everything in your booth to have a rhyme and reason. Your color scheme, if it matches or goes together, looks excellent. And then I always put up my little signs so that they know to follow me on social media. I also love lighting, so all of my candles are lit. Everything that lights up is turned on so that it will attract the eye. And then I have a little mix of things that are high priced, middle priced, and even, you know, small prices. It's important to have a good variety, but not to overcrowd your space. You continually have to go in about once a week or twice and just fix your merchandise, make sure everything looks nice and neat. You want your customers to have room to move around, but still take up every square inch of your booth because you're paying for it. So why not make use of every square inch that you possibly can in your booth? I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I wanna say thank you for hanging on all the way to the end. And I hope that you got a lot of good tips and tricks if you're wanting to do your own booth or if you're just wanting to see what I did with mine. So this is one of my two booths here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And you know I would love for you guys to visit me anytime and come see my store. 
And hey, more than that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and become a part of our little family here on YouTube. We're growing really fast and I would love to have you. We always have love, laughs, and DIYs, and I like for you to leave uplifted and feeling inspired and better than when you came. I love you guys, and I hope that y'all have a blessed week and stay safe, and God bless you all. I love you.